Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could join me for this edition of our Valentine Mark VI Canadian Build Early Production uh, Tank by Mini Art. Now, this is going to be part four. We'll be painting and applying decals to our kit. And this is where we left it in the last video. So the first thing we need to do is prepare uh, all of our photo etch for accepting our paint. So I'm going to use this Mr. Metal Primer. And this is a etching type primer. Uh, make sure that you don't get it on your hands. Um, what it's going to do is provide a good surface uh, for our paint to grip onto. That way we hopefully won't have any chipping or peeling of the paint uh, off of the photo etch. Now Mr. Metal Primer, uh, Metal Primer here, it will dry very, very thin. So we don't have to worry about any buildup or anything that we may have to buff off later. Just apply it with a brush and we want to cover all those surfaces. And since it dries so thin, we don't have to be too careful <laughs> uh, of getting it on the plastic because it'll dry just like, uh, to me, extra thin. Now here I've gone ahead and I've prepped uh, for painting. Uh, I've used uh, some cheap dollar store sponge to fill the gaps and also a little bit of uh, to me a mask tape to tape off little areas that we want to uh, protect from overspray. Now how you prepare your parts for painting is entirely up to you. Here I have a little painting jig um, with double stick tape to fix the part. And you can also use these gripping uh, tweezers. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and prime everything with uh, Panzer Gray. Now this is a Vallejo uh, water-based acrylic paint. Um, it's really easy for cleanup and it adheres very well to the plastic. And we're going to paint uh, everything on the model in this color. Uh, here we're doing the tracks and we'll also do the entire vehicle paying close attention around the suspension components because that's really hard to get paint in there <laughs> so uh, the added advantage of using a dark primer color like this is if there are areas later on that we kind of have trouble getting in with our base color uh, over top of this it will provide us with uh, some fake shadows. And those little areas won't be noticeable. So you do want to put this paint on uh, kind of thin. Just making sure that we cover everything, get into all those little nooks and crannies. <laughs> so next up, uh, after our Panzer Gray has dried, we're gonna use this acrylic uh, white craft paint here mixed up for our airbrush and we're going to use that to do some pre-shading I really like how the pre-shading comes out or has been coming out on previous <laughs> kits so I'm hoping that uh, this is going to look uh, on par with those other builds so what we're going to do here is just going to highlight um, light on high portions of the model and leaving it dark on the lower portions kind of giving us a fade effect into the panels and around corners so I am using my airbrush with the uh, protective cap removed so that paint dispersion isn't too too wide and we're just going to come in and do uh, these joints here where the top of the uh, turret has these different angles. And we'll do around certain details. It's kind of up to you. Uh, generally, anything that sticks out or anything that changes uh, its angle is a good place to do uh, the pre-shading here since the over top of the driver's compartment there are 
multiple angles. We can accent um, those panels a little bit by adding the white to the tops of them. And we're going to carry on the same theme uh, around the rest of the upper hull. And since these hubs on our road wheels are going to stick out, uh, we're going to go ahead and highlight those. And also around the edge of our uh, drive sprocket area here. And this is kind of what we have ended up with. I just feel a lot more comfortable with the pre-shading than I do with post-shading. <laughs> and uh, I find it really easy to do. And we can get a good effect uh, with our final paint job. Next up, the color I've chosen is again a uh, craft uh, paint. This is olive green. And we're just going to mix that up with a little bit of this airbrush thinner. This is the color we're going for. Uh, it's not really an olive drab. So I'm thinking that the olive green is going to work out well for it. So when we go to apply this paint, uh, what we're looking to do is just cover the surface lightly. And we'll keep coming back and put multiple coats on until we get it to the opacity. Is that or the opaqueness? Maybe it's opaqueness. Okay, I'm not an English scholar so <laughs> you'll have to bear with me there um, but we're just going to keep applying it nice and thin until we get to the point where our um, pre-shading uh, is blended nicely but still shows through uh, the top layer green coat of paint I just want to take my time doing this uh, and, and really make sure that I don't oversaturate any particular uh, area on the vehicle. We don't want to obliterate all of our pre-shading. And we're going to do this for the turret as well. And so it's just several light coats and that'll get us where we want to be. And a good rule of thumb here is to stop painting uh, right when you think maybe one more pass uh, would be good enough because that's usually that one more pass is a little bit too much. <laughs> so. so next up we need to take and uh, use our Panzer Gray again um, to take care of all the overspray on the tire portion of our road wheels and support rollers. Here I've got it mixed down to just about the um, airbrush consistency. That way the paint really, I, I'm able to get a little bead and kind of push it around the rim. And that way we don't have to worry about um, getting paint up on the rim. Um, of our road wheels. Now if you get it a little bit too thin uh, you may have to come back in and put a second coat but in this particular case uh, we're successful and one coat is all we need. And the painting goes pretty quickly so uh, here we are we have all of the uh, tire rubber portions of our road wheels and support rollers painted up. Now we're also going to use this exact same color and come in and paint these uh, rubber uh, dust flaps on our fender extensions. Just following along the contour. On the Valentine this contour is very wavy so it would be impossible to have masked this off earlier. So we're just going to come in and just paint around the edges of it here. And that will take care of any overspray that we have. And we'll just go ahead and just paint uh, by hand uh, the entire surface. So I am going to use this uh, Model Masters Acrylic Rust. Uh, it is a water-based acrylic. And we're going to paint the exhaust on our Valentine with this. What that's going to do for us is give us a nice 
uh, base uh, rust coat that later on we'll be able to come in and add some rusting effects. So we're just going to paint the muffler and the exit pipe and everything. Uh, being very careful not to paint the straps, those little photo etch straps that we installed. Going to want them to retain some of the paint and we'll do a little bit of something different with those uh, during the weathering process. I also like to come in and paint the tools. Now I know there are a lot of people out there that like for the tools to be the same color as the vehicle. I just don't find that <laughs> quite that interesting. And you know, uh, when you're building your model, it's all up to your taste. Uh, using the Panzer Gray uh, gives us a nice little paint palette, I guess you could call it, to come in and do a little bit of weathering on it, maybe throw on a little bit of surface rust, add extra visual detail there, some interest to the tools. Now here I'm coming in with Model Masters Wood Acrylic and uh, we're just going to paint up the wooden handles. Luckily for us on this model there's only two wooden handles. The, the one for the pick which is the one we're doing here and also the handle for the shovel. Now this light wood color is going to give us a um, base wood which we're going to come back in and use some uh, oils over top of it to simulate the wood grain. Now in order to do that we take uh, a little bit of this is a uh, burnt umber uh, artist oil and I place it on some cardboard and the cardboard will take and wick away uh, the linseed oil that's in it and I let this set for four hours before using it. And then we come back in with some uh, enamel thinner and use that as the carrier. You just want it thin enough that you can actually get the pigments on over top of that uh, light base wood color that we've already painted on. So the idea here is to make sure that we've got enough pigment to work with later on because we're going to come back and, and do some wood graining. To do that uh, wood graining, I'm going to use this slightly flared out uh, used brush and some clean um, enamel thinner. And you're going to want to take most of the thinner off of the brush and we're just going to drag it along these pigments. So just let the pigments dry um, a good 15 minutes or so. You don't have to wait for it to be completely dry. And as you know, oil paints take a, quite a while anyway. But since we've already gotten most of the linseed oil out of it and using the enamel thinner as a carrier, it will help uh, that remaining linseed oil to evaporate. And we're just going to grain it up a little bit. That doesn't look too bad. I like that. So now we're going to use this same process uh, on our jack block that goes on the right front fender uh, of our tank. Now I did paint the strap um, Tamiya Olive Drab. And then I used the Model Masters wood to paint the block and we're just going to apply the pigments uh, right over top of the Model Masters light wood color. On the ends I'm dabbing in the uh, uh, oil pigments because the end grain uh, on a wooden block has a much different look than the long grain uh, look on the sides. And we get that all painted up and again let it dry for 10 or 15 minutes until it gets that dull looking hue to it. Now this brush uh, is a stenciling brush. You can get that at most arts and crafts stores. And it's a real stiff bristle brush. 
And again, we're using uh, Tester's Enamel Thinner. And I'm going in with the brush uh, bristles perpendicular to the surface so that it will kind of cut right through and create some wood graining for us. Now it's a little wet right now, it's a little hard to see, but when it dries, those grains will, will show up for us. And we do the sides. Now on the ends of the block, I just do some stippling, just like that. And that'll make uh, the end of our block look like it's cross-cut, which is a good effect. And there we are with our wood graining. That looks pretty good. Probably the best block I think I've painted. It takes, just takes a little practice. So next up we're going to use this XF56 metallic gray. And we're going to use that to simulate uh, on our drive sprockets the areas where the track has worn away any paint. And of course there's not going to be much rust uh, on these areas because of the metal to metal contact. The metallic gray keeps uh, it being a very subdued silver color. Uh, it keeps it from standing out. You wouldn't want to paint this a real bright silver or at least it's to taste. So for me the metallic gray is a is a better choice. And just makes our wire marks there. So I am coming in now with some uh, testers enamel, flat steel, and we're just doing up the uh, wire areas on our tools. Sorry about this aspect ratio, I kind of got that wrong with the camera, but you can see uh, I'm just painting in over top of the uh, Panzer Gray, which was our base color for our metal parts of the tools. And the good thing about using these enamels, uh, we can come in with our enamel thinner and we can blend and remove any excess. We just want to make sure that we're real careful and we don't get this onto the green paint of the vehicle. That can be a little bit of a pain to clean up. And we'll just emphasize edges. So now what we want to do is prepare everything for our decals. Now this is X22 Tamiya, clear, it's a gloss. And these are the decals that we've chosen uh, to put on the vehicle. Now there's not but three of them, so it's not going to take long to do. So it's always good to get all of the materials out that you're going to need. As you can see, uh, it's white on white. It's hard to see what uh, the decal looks like. So it only takes about 20 seconds with these decals and I'm just testing to see that it's ready to move. And these are water slide decals. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Microset to prepare the surface. Microset, uh, when it dries underneath the decal, it gives us additional adhesion and I don't normally have very good luck with decals so I'm hoping that these turn out <laughs> really nice. Now these are thin decals. As you can see they they wrinkle really easy. Now they're not particularly fragile but you do need to be careful with them. Here I'm just going to use a q-tip and that will wick out uh, the uh, excess water and adhesive up underneath the decal. And then we're just going to gently roll over top of the decal and press it down over top of the details on top of this box. Press it down into place. And we're going to do the same thing uh, with the sides of the turret. Now these are, like I say, really thin decals. I'm, I'm hoping that they look really good well, by the time we get everything painted up. 
So you can always use a little bit more micro set around the edges if the decal doesn't want to slide into place. That'll kind of refloat the edges. And that's kind of important so that we can get everything lined up. And we have, do have to be careful. These decals are so thin that if they do fold up on themselves, you're going to have a hard time uh, straightening them out. So do be careful with that. And it's the same process. Wicking away excess water and then just rolling the uh, and pressing the decal down to the painted surface. So we're going to give this plenty of time to dry once the decals are completely dry. And it's a good idea to let them dry overnight. We're going to recoat everything where the decals are with the X22 by Tamiya. And now we can remove uh, any of our masks or the pieces of sponge that we've put in uh, to protect the areas that we didn't want to get painted or be oversprayed. And as you can see there, I've left the line of white around the hatch areas and of course down in the bottom of the turret. We didn't want to paint that up green. We spent a lot of time painting the interior of this thing, so uh, we want to protect that as much as possible. And when it's time to remove uh, these components, especially these sponge uh, sections that we cut and put inside the hull, we want to be very careful and gentle with it because there are details down there that we don't want to knock loose. And also you can see here that I did put in a little bit of mask around the inside of where the driver's hatch openings are. And there we go. So uh, we've got our decals on and the vehicle is all painted up. Uh, to include uh, our fender extensions uh, with the rubber dust flaps or whatever you call them. <laughs> uh, if anybody knows, uh, let me know in the comment what you call those little rubber pieces, those extensions. Um, and also our tracks now, those are still done in the flat Panzer Gray. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in to see this uh, addition to this build. And we have a lot more to go. Uh, next video is going to be um, our weathering process. You're not going to want to miss that. And of course our final reveal. That should take care of this kit. Uh, I want to thank all of my subscribers. It's because of you guys that uh, I keep making these videos. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments what you think of our progress so far. And if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. It's free of charge, doesn't cost anything, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss the uh, next addition to this build project and many more build projects to come. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.